In this video, I will discuss how EKG leads are placed, and I will explain how the leads correspond to different areas of the heart. Let's talk about EKG lead placement first. A 12 lead EKG is performed by placing the leads in the locations as shown here. But wait, I only see 10 leads. Huh? Let's figure this out. The six leads here, V1 to V6, are placed around the heart and are called the precordial leads. They're also supposed to be six limb leads. Here we can see one lead on the right arm, the RA lead, one on the left arm, the LA lead, one on the right leg, the RL lead, and one on the left leg, the LL lead. So six precordial leads plus four limb leads equals 10 leads. And in fact, some EKG machines don't even use the RL lead, which would make for a nine lead EKG. However, what is not obvious from looking at the placement of the leads is that 12 different electrical vectors are actually measured from these leads. Each of the six precordial leads measures an electrical vector going towards it from a set point in the heart, as shown here. Notice the direction of the electrical vector corresponding to each precordial lead. Also notice that V1 points anteriorly and slightly to the right of midline. As another example, V6 points predominantly laterally. As for the limb leads, the RA lead measures the electrical vector going to it from that same set point in the heart. The resultant vector is called AVR. Similarly, the LA lead measures the electrical vector going to it from the set point at the middle of the heart, and the resultant vector is called AVL. The left leg lead measures the electrical vector going to it from the same set point, and that vector is called AVF. The other three limb leads displayed on a standard 12 lead EKG are 1, 2, and 3. Where are those? Lead 1 represents the voltage that goes from the right arm to the left arm, something that we can determine from the RA and LA leads, and hence don't need another lead for. Lead 2 represents the voltage that goes from the right arm to the left foot, something that we already have from the RA and LL leads. And lead 3 represents the voltage that goes from the left arm to the left foot, something that we already have from the LA and LL leads. So with these three limb leads, you can see that while there are only 9 or 10 physical leads on the EKG, you can produce what is effectively a 12 lead EKG. It's a good idea to learn where these leads are placed because first of all, it will help you to understand why certain things appear the way they do on EKG. And second of all, if you know where the leads are supposed to be placed, you can perform an EKG simply by placing the leads in those spots and connecting the EKG machine. Now that you understand the leads on an EKG, it's important to identify which coronary arteries correspond to which leads. Here is a heart showing the three coronary arteries you need to know for the purposes of EKG interpretation. The leads that are within the LAD's territory are V1 and V2, often called the septal leads, and V3 and V4, the anterior leads. Notice that if you understand how the leads are placed, as I just described a minute ago, it's easy to figure out which leads correspond to which arteries. Reviewing this picture one more time, notice that leads V1 to V4 measure anteriorly directed vectors. And since you know from anatomy that the LAD is an anterior artery, you can surmise that the leads V1 to V4 correspond to the LAD territory. You can apply the same logic to see that the leads within the circumflex arteries territory are V5, V6, 1, and AVL. The remaining leads, which are all inferior leads, are 2, 
3 in AVF. Most people say these are within the territory of the right coronary artery, which is true, but it's actually a little more precise to say they are within the territory of the posterior descending branch of the right coronary artery, which is right here. So here's a quick recap. Let's look at the table. This will all become important when trying to determine which vessel an MI has occurred in. For example, if you see signs on an, of an MI in leads V1 and V2, that tells you that the patient is having a septal MI due to a clot in the LAD. And if you see signs of an MI in leads 2, 3, and AVF, that tells you the patient is having an inferior MI due to a clot in the RCA. All right, that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll start covering the basics of reading an EKG. Here are our take-home points for this video. Only 9 to 10 leads are needed to perform a 12-lead EKG. Once again, the proper lead placement is shown here. You should memorize where those 10 leads are placed and understand the directionality of each lead. The other main thing to get out of this video is which leads correspond to which coronary arteries. Remember, V1 through V4 correspond to the LAD. V5, V6, 1, and AVL correspond to the circumflex. 2, 3, and AVF correspond to the RCA.